How do we apply a plaster to the upper sections of walls? There is no one perfect method for this. You've got several options to choose from. Just pick the convincing one. This is a wall with external and internal plaster layers. Green and red colors are to illustrate them. We need to apply a plaster to the top of the wall section. In the plan view, at the end of the wall, we can easily do similar action by wrapping the ends. But unfortunately, we cannot do the same for the top of walls or the bottom. Let's explore the different methods to achieve this. All inside. We created another copy of the wall. The method is to add the top plaster inside the wall type. Expand the preview panel. You can see the wall plan here. We have to change the view to section. Then, let's edit the wall structure. Here are the layers of the wall as you can see, and down there, there are a few options which we will use. Use split region to split the external face of the core carefully. Let's adjust the required height of the top plaster. Use the small blue arrow to adjust it from the top of the wall instead of its bottom. Of course, we need the plaster to be attached to the top edge. Now merge the external plaster to the top of the wall as desired. Proceed with extreme caution as there is no undo option, unless you start again from the beginning. Then, if we applied this rivet won't accept what we did. To solve this problem, simply include the external layer to be a part of the core. Why? Because the core layer of the wall is not satisfied. Rivet considers that the core layer's thickness is zero at the top of the wall, where we merge the external plaster. You can include any of the external or internal layers to the core to solve the problem. Then Rivet will get convinced that the core layer thickness is not zero at any part of the wall. Is this method acceptable? Well, it would have been fine, but there's a main problem. The core issue can cause some troubles, like not being able to use the wrapping option anymore, as the plaster becomes a part of the core layer of the wall. Plus, you won't be able to hide the non-core layers. It is always better to keep every element in a proper arrangement to avoid such problems. Let's move on to method number two, built-in sweep. Back into the wall type, now let's use the built-in sweep. We will add a sweep profile and adjust it to be in the top of the wall. This is not the profile we need. We will create the proper profile after a while. We can decrease the sample height just to make it easier to work in the preview panel. Start a new profile family. Just choose non-categorized profile. And let's create a simple rectangular profile. The width here is the same as the wall total thickness and the height is to be the plaster required thickness, which is 20 millimeter in this case. As usual, save the family, give it a good name, and load it into the project. Now it's time to choose the correct profile we just created. Don't forget to assign the correct material also. Let's see the final result in the section. Looks satisfying? Well, the truth is, and as I said in the beginning, there is no perfect method. Let's explore the disadvantages of this solution. In a real project, you will be having a chain of walls, not just a simple single wall. Also, you may be having some of these walls with a variable heights. Look to the connections of the built-in sweep we integrated in the wall. It is messy. There is a chance to make some enhancements, but not too much. Also, you may try to do a massive manual work to fix these connections by creating a model in place void extrusions. But honestly, in a medium or even a small project, that will be a nightmare. External Sweep 
It is a very similar method, but here we add the sweeps separately, not inside the wall type. We choose the wall sweeps and adjust the profile, then add sweeps manually to the wall. In addition to the previous method problems, here we need to join the wall with the sweep to clean the connection between both. This is and extra work need to be done. However, this allows us to use the wall type along the project if we don't need the upper plaster in all the instances of this wall type and add the sweep individually wherever we need, but it also has the same problems regarding the connections. You may need to use line work tool to hide some connections lines in the plan view. Also, this sweep is not attached to the wall, which means that if you decided to change the wall height at any time, the sweep will leave the wall and won't follow it. Seems an uncomfortable method, but sometimes it has some benefits, especially if the top coping is not a plaster. If you have a marble coping you may want to use this method. A final note, the model in place void extrusion won't help. Hard not smart. They say, work smart don't work hard. Well actually sometimes you need to do it all manually. This method is to simply cover the wall with a floor or roof, create the type of floor with the desired thickness and draw a sketch above the wall you need to cover. That's simple. To fix this connection, you need to make the floor plaster layer as a structure not a substrate as it usually must be. Then proceed to join the floor with the wall to get the proper connection you need. Stacked wall. This is a totally different approach, and whether you will choose this method or not, it is very nice to explore this side. We will create a new wall type, a plaster wall. It is a type has no layers but plaster, with the thickness of the wall we need to cover. And then create a stacked wall type. It is where you can stack a set of walls on top of each other. Here, we need only two types of walls, the basic one, and the plaster cover above. The basic wall must have the variable height, and the plaster wall will have a fixed height of 20 millimeters in this case. However, Rivet does not accept any wall height with 20 millimeters, so we have to do a small trick to overcome this problem. Back to the type of the plaster wall, in the section preview, we need to unlock the bottom edge of the layer. And then in the stacked wall, we put the plaster height of 40 millimeters, but with base of 20 millimeters, this will give us clear 20 millimeters height for the plaster. That's it. Okay, is it free of connection problems? Unfortunately not. It also has connection problems, and sometimes it may not be 100% stable, maybe because it contains a wall with a height that Rivet does not usually accept. But the good news is that it can work perfectly with model-in-place voids, as the plaster here is not an internal or external sweep, so it is considered as a wall, semi-regular wall. Revise and check all these methods and examine by yourself all its advantages and disadvantages. You may find an enhanced versions of them, or maybe you have your own better method than all these ones. And tell me in the comments which one you will choose for your project, and why, or tell me if you are having a better method. Rocks Engineering